Hello and welcome to Baby Wearing 101. My name is Amy and we are going to be talking about a whole lot in this hour. Newborn wearing is a goal that I want to make sure that we're covering lots of newborn baby wearing um, tips and tricks for you. Safety basics for all carrier types really, whether you fall in love with soft structure carriers or maybe ring slings today, or you decide what to go with a different carrier type, we'll cover safety basics for everything. We'll get to facing out, back carrying maybe, um, our newest carrier, the Tula Light, is really cool. I want to make sure you'll be able to see that. And uh, maybe we'll get to ring slings. We'll see how much time we have. But welcome to Baby Wearing 101. Uh, my name is Amy. I would love to know, as I introduce myself, where are you tuning in from today? Oh, I have a comment to, to put up there. Hi, hello. Where are you tuning in from today? I have my computer down here so I can see your comments because I love to know where you all are from. Um, I know this is an event that's based in Orlando, but because we have the virtual component, we get all kinds of people. Um, so drop that into the comments and I will introduce myself so you know a little bit about me before we jump into all of this. My name is Amy Rainbow. I am a baby wearing educator. Um, I'll get to what that is in a second. I live in Portland, Oregon. I'm coming to you from very sunny today, Portland. Uh, my cat is in the room, so we'll see if he makes an appearance. I have three kids who hopefully will stay quiet. They're with my husband right now. Um, and I'm a baby wearing educator, as I mentioned. So my job is to make sure that you are comfortable in your carrier, that you've got the right carrier for your body type, for your lifestyle, for your budget, uh, and that that carrier is comfortable on your body for you and your baby, right? Everybody needs to be comfortable. I think we as caregivers, as parents, focus so much on our baby's safety and comfort, which is great, but our comfort is really important too. So I want to make sure we talk about that today. I'm going to jump right in and give you like a really quick demo about how to put on our carriers, which applies for almost all of our soft structured buckle carrier types. Um, because one cool thing about Tula that sets us apart from a lot of other carrier types or other carriers, other manufacturers, is that it's really quick to put this one on. Um, you guys are from all over the place. I love this. Lots of Florida people, which is great. Um, Orlando, St. Pete, Tampa, wonderful. Let me know, because I, like I like to know where you're tuning in from. So this one is our free to grow carrier. But all of our carriers start with the padded waist belt on your waist. I like to put it on backward. There's a little safety elastic that the buckle goes through here. Click. Bring it around. Now I'm going to get my baby. This is Hamilton, one of my plastic children who will be hanging out with us today. I'm going to put my baby on my body just like I would hold my baby in my arms in this position. Take this panel up to, their, to the nape of their neck. Shoulders go up. Clip in the back. And we're in. That's as quick as it needs to be in a doula. Click, click, and go. You're, you're off to the races. Or you're having a very cozy nap at home, or you're getting some chores in around the house, or whatever it is. Maybe you're playing video games, or eating hot food. I can't tell you how much salsa has fallen on my baby's heads as I've, as I've worn them in the past. But that's a really cool thing about Tula carriers, is that you get into the carrier very quickly. Let's go over some safety basics before I take this off. Okay, awesome. If you have questions, oh, Alaska, that's awesome. Hello, welcome from Alaska. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I've got them up here, and um, I'll try to make sure that I get to all of them in our time together today. If for some reason I don't, though, keep in mind that we're live in the booth several times throughout this event. You can come over, see what questions have been asked, um, ask more questions. Um, and we're happy to answer them. Also, our customer support team, you can access them through babytula.com. Really, really great and responsive, making sure that, um, that all your questions are answered. Like I said, we all want to make sure that you and your baby are safe, but also very comfortable in the carrier. So baby wearing should be cozy and comfortable. That's one of the great things about it. So I mentioned safety basics. The first thing is we want to make sure that our baby's airway is supported and monitored the whole time that they're in the carrier. So I can look down and I can see my baby's, my plastic baby's face. Um, very important <laughs> that his airway is open the whole time. Babies will have their head in different positions. You follow whatever they wanna do, really. As long as their chin is up off their chest, um, that helps to make sure their chin is up off their chest and also we can see that their airway is open. They're getting fresh air. 
all that good stuff, right? The cool thing is that the rest of their body mechanics are actually supporting this open airway. So that's why Tulas have nice padding around the knees here, and nice darts on the on the um, outside of the carrier here, so that that seat, this part that holds baby's bottom, is nice and deep in here, right? Or not darts, but just kind of the way that the panel is structured. We want to make sure that it's that baby is nice and deeply seated, so that their bottom is lower than their knees here. So you could even like reach inside here and kind of. I'm doing this kind of cupping action around their hips to really sink their bottom into here and lift their knees up oh <laughs> using your carrier to shovel snow that's a really great <laughs> really great use when you need to use it right um lift up at their knees and make sure their bottom really settles in here and that makes sure that their um their lower part of their body this core part of their body is set up so that their spine is in a nice alignment and that helps them keep their chin up off their chest and their airway open. So that airway, that seat of baby's body mechanics, two really important things. But like I mentioned already, comfort is really important. So that's the third thing. If you're not comfortable, reach out for help. There's baby wearing educators all over the country. And like I said, Baby Tula has a great customer service department. They want to make sure, we all want to make sure it that you're as comfortable as possible in these carriers. So that's some safety basics. Let's talk a little bit more in depth about some of the features of Baby Tula carriers. So I'm gonna take this carrier off. As I do that though, maybe you noticed when I went to buckle this clip back here, there's, um, there's kind of like a magic spot on everybody's body where this clip really feels good. Most of the time, it's kind of in this middle sort of area, not too high. When it's up too high, the straps actually kind of come together, can pinch on your shoulders and really hurt eventually on your uh, upper back, up in your shoulder area. When it's too low, actually the opposite happens. You start feeling it really down here. But when it's right there in a happy medium, your shoulder straps almost form like a, a capital H on your back, it's kind of hard to see because black on black at this point. Um, but that capital H on your back is a good indicator that this is down low enough that it's not gonna pinch your shoulders and it's gonna be really comfortable for you. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to get to, right? When it's in that position all the way down there. So here's a trick. What you can do is let out your shoulder straps. There's a little, the webbing has a, a loosener. I'm sure that's what it's called right here under your arms so you can let out your shoulder straps a bit there we go one two and then you can take this clip up over your head like that so you don't have to undo it you can do the same thing when you're putting the carrier on make sure you're supporting your baby with your hand all the way up to like their neck area upper shoulders and then you can take this clip over your head and then simply tighten up under your arms so um, that can help a lot with independence in using the baby carrier so you don't have to ask somebody to like undo your clip before which I've absolutely done in the parking lot <laughs> and asked a stranger like hey can you please undo my my chest clip for me so one of the cool features about the Tula free to grow specifically I want to talk about the explore today the free to grow and the light for sure and we'll talk about what all those mean the free to grow is really nice because right now you can see it's a pretty good size carrier, right? I mean, Hamilton is a, eh, he's a six month to a year size baby generally. Um, so this kind of resembles our standard carrier. The standard carrier was the first carrier that Tula came out with. Um, and it doesn't do the adjusting that I'm about to show you. What I mean by that is this carrier can adjust down to fit a newborn. It starts at seven pounds. How it can do that is it's got these cool little snaps inside the waist belt. There they are. So right now, we're super wide. It's upside down. <laughs> we're super wide. And then I can move my snaps down like this. The fabric just scrunches. And I snap it into the lowest snap setting. Maybe. There we go. I snap it into that very, very lowest snap setting on both sides. Undo my snap, scrunch it down, re-snap on the 
tiniest, tiniest, tiniest setting. And now I'll show you the inside of the carrier. We still get that really deep bucket. So baby's bottom gets in there. They have that nice ergonomic seat with their knees up nice and high, but it's gotten so much more narrow. So our tiny little babies can fit from knee to knee without the need of an infant insert. If you've been around baby wearing for a while, you know what an infant insert is. It's basically like a little extra piece that goes inside the carrier to support a newborn when there's no adjustable features like what this one has. Because the free to grow has these cool adjustment features, we don't need any extra pieces at all. No extra pieces. It also has up at the top of the panel. So right now I'm actually gonna put this on because I think it demonstrates the panel height just a bit better. Oh yeah, it does, the military gears. Yep, it's a perfect color for that. That kind of green, naturey green. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, so as I put it on, I can show you the panel right now. And I'm stretching it out, so I'm kind of exaggerating a bit. But it comes up to my chin. When there's a baby in it, of course, it comes down a bit because the baby fills that up. But right now, if I just stretch it out to give you a comparison, it comes up to my chin. There's these adjusters up here on the shoulders. See that there? And we can adjust those down. Bear with me just a sec because I always, when it's live, oh, okay, it's going pretty well today. <laughs> One side, adjust it all the way down. The other side, fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. Going pretty well for me today. Good. We've got some Friday magic going on. Maybe I spoke too soon. They're actually really easy to do. I just, for some reason, this one always trips me up when I'm live. There we go. So now that I've got it adjusted down and I pull it all the way up, you can see how much shorter that panel is. We shortened it by a good, I don't know, hand width or so. Um, so that really helps when we've got our little babies like Hazel. Hazel's a bit smaller than your average newborn. I'd say she's more like a five and a half or six pound newborn. So not quite the seven pound minimum, but she is a great example of how the fit works with a tiny baby. So I'm gonna put her on my body. Like I said, when we did a quick demo to start, just where I'd hold her in my arms without a carrier, just kind of like this. And the same position of their legs, Right, even for a newborn, their little legs are going to be a little bit away from their body, just a teeny tiny bit, enough for this fabric to kind of come up in between in their little knee pit in there, not to pull their legs away from their body, but it can kind of sneak in there. We really want to follow the cues, especially with our newborns. We want to follow their cues for their own body placement as long as their head is up here on our chest right, because monitoring that airway is really important. And their bottom is seated in the carrier with their knees up. Other positions that they're gonna take, like where their arms go, where exactly their feet go, if they tuck them back, whatever, that's up to you. Maybe we just follow their cues. Okay, so now that we've got the panel up like so, make sure it's folded down. I'm gonna show you that t-shirt trick again. So you just grab that buckle. I don't need to put the shoulders or, uh, up on my, the shoulder straps up on my shoulders. I could if I wanted to, but I think the simplest way is to just grab that buckle, put it over your head, and then the shoulder straps kind of fall where they need to, and your arms can come in. Keep that hand on baby, because they're not supported yet by the carrier, until we get this nice and snug. I'm gonna grab back here, pull forward, and as I do that, here's a really important aside. As I do that, I'm gonna like loosen it up a bit to show. I'm pulling kind of down and rotating my shoulder backward, then pulling forward. And that really helps to tighten up here so I've not got any missing slack, any slack that's kind of hiding on my shoulders. And it gets it out of my arm a bit. So pull down a bit, rotate that shoulder back to move that slack backward, and then pull it forward. Most of the time, you don't really have to think about that, but if you're having any kind of, oh, it's just kind of under my arm, oh, I'm like got some extra slack here, there's a bit of a gap, that down and then forward motion, with that shoulder shimmy, a little damp, that can really help. Excellent, good. And if you have questions, like I said, feel free to drop them in. Okay, so you can see here with Hazel, like I like the panel to be a little bit lower on her. I'd like to be able to see most of her ear, but me as the caregiver, I can, as the wearer, as the parent, 
the expert in the situation because you are the expert in your child. I can look down and see her chin is up off her chest, her airway is open, and were she not plastic, <laughs> she would be breathing really well. I can also come all the way down to make sure my newborn has a nice curve of their spine. That's what I think is really great about Tula carriers too, is that there's hardly anything to this panel. It's really not got a lot of extra fluff and extra unnecessary padding. It's not bulky. It's really streamlined here. So newborns get a really nice, soft, comfortable place for their back to land. And then down to the bottom, that bottom is really sitting in the carrier. Sometimes I even with a newborn, I'll take my hand and Hazel could use this right now. I take my hand and put it inside the carrier. So I'm holding on to my baby's bottom like this. And then I take my other hand with this uh, waist belt and kind of smoosh it like up as close and like into my body as I can. I'm not bringing it really up in between me, me and baby, maybe just a little bit, but it's mostly getting this waist belt as flat against my body as I can. And then I'm really dropping her into, placing her into that bucket part there. And you can tell that helped with the panel just a little bit. It got her in the carrier just a little bit more. Like I said, Hazel's a little small for this one, but she does give a really good demonstration of how, how little this can really get. So then my own comfort. I check to make sure, oh yeah, my chest clip is feeling good. And this is adjustable. A great thing to adjust before you put the carrier on. When you first put it on, you're not gonna know exactly where that chest clip should be for you. It's really an experiment. You're figuring up and down, trial and error. But uh, you can take it off, like let me show you right now. I can loosen up my shoulder straps. But I wanted it down. I actually do want it down just a tiny bit. I'm gonna hold on to Hazel, bring this up. And then I can take these sliders here, move it down just a little bit. Definitely easier to do when the baby's not in the carrier. I'm gonna slide it down just a teensy bit. A little more than that. Okay. And then I can look, I like to take, there's these buttons at the top, and I just line up the buttons, line up the webbing, make sure that they're even, put that back up. No. There we go. It's a little bit lower on my back, and it feels a little bit better. A little bit better for me. So there's a couple of the adjustments that we can do um, with the with the clip back here to make our shoulders feel a little bit more stable. And those are the adjustments for getting a newborn into the free to grow carrier here at the panel and down here at the at the waist belt. So let's take this one off and then let's talk about the Explore and the feature that the Explore carrier adds. Oh, Olga, that's a really good question about breastfeeding in a carrier. Yes, let me. I want to try to make sure that we get to that. Really, it's all about lowering everything down, but it would work the same way in all of the Tula structured carriers like this. Um, so hopefully, and I'm pretty sure we'll have time, we'll get to that one. Okay, let's talk about the um, Explore Carrier. Yeah, there we go, the Explore Carrier and the feature that adds. I also wanna make sure that I talk real quickly as I take this one off. There is this safety elastic piece here. It's kind of hard to see because it's black, but I'll show you the waistband. The safety elastic here. You want to make sure that you get your buckle, this buckle, through that elastic, like so. Then through your buckle, and even better if you bring that extra webbing through. So it looks like that. There's the buckle. There's the safety elastic. There's all the extra webbing. That's a really great safety feature with that buckle down there. I have hit the buckle against the wall once and it just kind of popped open. I was right there, so I figured it out right away. But um, it was really great to have that extra safety feature to make sure that the, the waist belt wasn't going to go anywhere while my baby was in it. Okay. So we've added with the, the um, Explore here a couple of features. 
one, you'll notice, I'm just going to hold it up like this. There we go. You'll notice with this one, there is a mesh panel right down the center of the carrier there. So that isn't standard with all of the Explore style of Tula carriers. This is a coast version. So there's a coast version with a mesh insert in the free to grow in the explore in the standard all of those carriers come with this extra kind of cool weather or hot weather cool baby hot weather option of the mesh panel in the middle there so you get a little bit more airflow to baby which is really helpful maybe for all of you who are tuning in from florida and you're like i'm really interested in this carrier but i'd still like something maybe a tad bit cooler the coast option is really great really great for that the other thing that you might notice that's different about the explore versus the free to grow that we had on before is there's these buttons down here that's because the feature that the explore adds is facing out so you can face out your baby uh, when they are tall enough that their chin can see up over the top of the panel so the panel is no higher than here when they're in the forward facing position. Your baby should also have really great head and neck control, right? So they can keep their own airway up since they don't have the, the ability to default to putting their head on their chest when they get tired. And they need to have that ability to hold up or not even when they get tired, just when they're tired of holding their head up. And they're just like, I just wanna let, put it down for just a minute. Um, the facing out option, they don't really have the ability to put their head down. So they need to have strong head and neck control. And if they get sleepy, just turn them around so they can actually <laughs> put their head down. And I can show you how quick it can be to turn them around into a forward facing position. Tula carriers also, um, let me actually, before we get a baby in, because I'm gonna take this hood off to demonstrate the forward facing position. They all come with this sleepy hood. So the sleepy hood detaches. It also, I mentioned there are those snaps up at the top of the shoulders. So when your baby gets sleepy, you can take this snap here, snap here, and give them a little bit of extra space for their sleepiness, right? Um, all of them have a hood, and all of them have a hood that is detachable. So if you want to keep your hood on, great. You want to take it off because you don't really use it like me i almost never use um, a sleepy hood with any of my kids great it's also great for breastfeeding when we come back to the breastfeeding conversation so what i'm going to do to change this carrier from facing in to facing out is first move these buttons and that's the only adjustment <laughs> other than having to change my baby baby's actual physical position the only adjustment is to move the buttons down it's also a good idea to have your carrier on the widest setting. The Explore and the Free to Grow both have those snaps in the weight belt in the waist belt that I mentioned. So if you want a carrier that does all the positions and doesn't require an infant insert, the Explore is the way to go for you. If you're not interested in the facing out position, but you really don't want one of those bulky infant inserts, then the Free to Grow is the one for you. If you're past the newborn stage or you don't mind having an insert, the standard carrier is probably going to be a good one. And then if your baby is outgrown the standard, they're uh, in 2T pants or beyond. They weigh at least 20, or sorry, 25 pounds. Yeah, at least 25 pounds. Then they're ready for our toddler carrier too. And we even have a preschool size carrier that starts at, uh, I can't remember what it starts at, but it goes up to 75 pounds. So lots and lots of options to keep wearing those babies for as long as, long as you want. So we've got, our explore now in the facing out mode. We're in the widest seat setting. Our buttons are down. So the outside buttons are for facing in. The inside buttons are for facing out. And that's just because we wanna give baby, baby's legs a little bit of extra space um, so they can get around there too. Okay, so welcome back Hamilton. I'm gonna place him here on my body just like I would if I was holding him in my arms in that facing out position, right? And then the carrier comes up here to support this posture. And actually, I'm gonna buckle this first, and then we're gonna talk more about, about his posture. So I'm gonna do my old school buckles, shoulders up, or up here. Okay. 
tighten these up just a bit. There we go. Same thing, down, shimmy, shimmy, forward. There we go. Actually got it a little extra tight. Ah, that's good. Extra tight totally happens. Um, sometimes, well, I mean, because we want to be in the carrier, like snug, we want our babies to be really snug up against us. So sometimes we just kind of over tighten and I'll show you what that looks like actually. You can see here, when I got it over tight, there's some puckering happening here. I also feel like extra compression. You wanna make sure that you and your baby can move together but if you do a little dance, hey, have a little baby dance party, very fun to do in a carrier, great exercise for you. But they're not moving around in the carrier, but you can see how much I could let that out. I could let it out this much. And we're still, Hamilton and I are very much moving together as one unit. So I mentioned, let's talk about baby's position. Hamilton is tall enough for this carrier because his chin clears the top of the panel, right? No part of the panel is on his face at all. So his airway is nice and open and he's not bothered by any fabric hitting his face. His arms come in this U shape kind of here in between the top and bottom of the shoulder strap. There's a great little spot there for Hamilton's arms to come out. And then his legs here, I can do that same kind of lift underneath, but this time I'm kind of doing like a, a this sort of a motion. Before I was coming in on the sides and scooping around and down and now I'm coming in this way and I'm like lifting their bottom a little bit, moving them forward. So I'll do it with this hand. Moving them a tad bit forward and then placing them into that bucket. So they're not so much sitting on my body or even on this waist belt. Their bottom is in that seat. And then their knees are gonna kinda come up like this with the padding on the sides so that they're not overspread they're not hanging down. They're up in that same kind of ergonomic position that the Tula carriers give you when they're facing in toward your body. And that's what I love so much about the Tula and the Ergo Baby carriers. Tula Baby, or Baby Tula and the Ergo Baby are kind of sister companies. And they're facing out carriers do a really great job of keeping that ergonomic position, keeping baby's knees up higher than their bottom. Um, so facing out my, uh, milestones, Tall enough, great head and neck control. Make sure you're on the widest seat setting and that those buttons come down. And that's pretty much the important part <laughs> that you need to know to get to the facing out position. If baby falls asleep, like I said, we're gonna move them in. So let me show you what that can look like. Take this down. Come on out of here, baby. Bring my baby out. Turn them around. Calm them down a little bit, maybe. Maybe a fly flew into their face and they're like, ah, what just happened? Buckle back up. There we go. We're back in. We're calming down. That fly was so mean. And as we, oh yeah, we're calming down. I'll move my buttons. But I don't move my buttons right away. Especially if there's like, oh, okay, there's an emergency kind of situation. Baby feels like it's an emergency. Let's get them turned around right away. Um, I don't move my buttons first. Plus their legs are still in the facing out position. So it's a whole lot easier for everybody if we kind of get them settled first and then move everything back. It is nice to move it back. Some people are like, oh, I'll just leave them down. It's great to move them back because that baby gets a little bit of more support in that knee area, and they don't have to work so hard to keep their knees up higher than their bottom. So there's that. Thank you. Um, okay, so where is your weight carried? That's a really good question. These carriers are all designed to really hold the weight in your waist area. That's why the padded waist belt goes a bit over your hips, just a tiny bit over your hips, that really strong core part of your body. So you shouldn't be feeling it on your shoulders. In fact, if you are feeling it on your shoulders, maybe we've got an extra, maybe we're a little extra tight. Like I was kind of feeling it on my shoulders there. And I loosened a bit, that feels a lot better. Maybe we've got a chest clip that is in the wrong spot for you and your specific body type. Um, so yeah, you should definitely be feeling it on the waist and not so much on the shoulders. How many colors with the Tula Light? So that's the carrier I'm gonna go over next. Um, the Tula Light, I believe comes in four carriers, or four colors right now. 
there's the green one that we've already gone over. There's a black, which is Discover. Um, the Discover light is one of our giveaway carriers today. Let me go over the giveaways and also some weight limits and prices for the carriers. While I take this one off, we'll talk about the Tula light. So our giveaways is one Explore Coast Beyond, and that is this carrier that I'm wearing right here. This is the Coast with the mesh, and this is the Beyond print, and this is the Explore style. So this exact carrier is one of the giveaways. Um, there's a half buckle, which I don't have for you today, but a half buckle is a really unique offering that Tula has. That's one of the giveaways. A light, which I'm gonna go over now, in um, the uh, Discover print, which I'll show you, let me grab this real quick. The Discover print is this really great black with stars on it. That comes in the Tula light barrier. Um, and then they're also giving away, oh, a ring sling, the Remy ring sling. Um, it's one of their newest, it's their newest um, ring sling fabric. The thing about Tula ring slings, which I think we'll probably have enough time to get to ring slings is that um, they are found in a different part of the website. That's the really important thing to communicate to you. If you go to babytula.com and you go to carriers, you'll see all of these different soft structure carriers that I talked about, but not the ring slings. You need to go to the signature and then the signature ring slings, signature carriers, signature ring slings, because the ring slings are made from woven wrap fabric. They don't stock in the same colors all of the time, but they have this new Remy ring sling, which has a lot more stock and you can get. Um, it's just beautiful print. So um, that's an aside about ring slings. Um, all the carriers that I, the two that I show, have shown you so far, the Explore and the Free to Grow start at seven pounds. They go up to 45 pounds. The free to grow, since it faces in and does back carries, just those two positions, it starts at 159. The explore that also does the facing out position starts at 179. And I say starts because sometimes they have special releases, they have um, wrap conversion carriers, their signature line. They'll do their signature line in these two uh, carrier styles as well. So um, the prices may vary sometimes, but this twill sort of fabric that you saw today, those are your 159 and 179 price points, seven to 45 pounds for both of those carriers. They're all machine washable, um, great for plus sizes too. That's usually a question that we get a lot, as well as fit uh, different sizes other than the person that's showing me the carriers today. Yes. Absolutely, plus sizes fit in the carriers really well. It's a challenge that I like to do in um, when people ask in in-person events. Um, I always like to get them to put the carrier on because it always it always fits. So let's talk about the lights. So you may have been like, she just put on a hip pack, and that's kind of different because that's not a carrier. It looks like a hip pack, but the Tula light is designed to be kind of a little incognito sort of carrier. It's for our slightly older babies. This one starts at 15, or sorry, it starts at 12 pounds and goes up to 30 pounds. And it's really great for like when you're taking a walk through the neighborhood with your just starting to walk child and they can only go so far, so then you need to put them up. Or you start with them, up on your body and they're wiggling, wiggling and just wanting to get down. Well, what do you do with the carrier when they want to get down? It's just kind of hanging down to your knees. So they came up with this awesome hip pack design. What's really cool is that you unzip here and the carrier stows away inside the hip pouch and it unrolls. And look at that. We've got a whole Tula <laughs> inside of there. Um, so I'll show you the handles in the same way, same way that you put on our other carriers. Place baby on your body where you'd want them to be already. Bring this up, shoulder straps come up. It even has one of those sleepy hoods in it. I'm gonna clip. I'm actually gonna move this up just a tiny bit. I didn't check before I put it on, which is a great thing to do. So to check the height of your chest clip before you put it on. There's a teaching moment for you, right? And if you can't reach it, like me, I'm like, ah, oh, I can't get to it. You can let up the length of that webbing. It's all super, super tight right now so that I can store it. Let up the length of that webbing. 
here's another thing that you could do if um if you're struggling with the, the chest clip back there but you don't want to put the whole thing over your head like i did and made my hair all frizzy and all that stuff another thing that you can do is let these shoulder straps out find that chest clip behind you and bring it up find this one and as soon as you let your hand off your baby you're going to want to make sure that this shoulder strap you're keeping tension so you're pulling it up and behind you slightly as you go up 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 find that clip up here behind you and remember we're still pulling backward buckle hold on to this now we can hold on to our baby drop that and do our so so they're like bring it down and forward down and forward there we go so we're still just as quick and as cozy as we were in the other carriers but this carrier is made with like a ripstop nylon sort of fabric so it's a lot lighter it's moisture wicking so it dries really quickly it's not water it's not to be in the water but it is that same kind of like sporty fabric that like gym shorts and stuff are made of same sleepy hood same snaps up at the top plus you get a really great <laughs> there's the cat <laughs> you get a really great pouch in here that is very generously sized so you could fit a phone keys a diaper and probably a little like ziploc bag full of wipes no problem in the pouch that's that's down there when the carrier is in use and when the carrier is not in use you don't lose uh, capacity of this pouch when the carrier is rolled up inside of it and then to take it off I'm gonna unbuckle real quickly there we go I'm gonna bring it down place my baby down and I'll show you a, a neat trick for rolling it up what you want to do is kind of place all of this stuff on the inside or sorry not on the inside on the outside your instinct might go to place it on the inside but if you place it on the outside kind of just take your panel up onto your chest bring all this stuff in roll it down and then it stuffs in there really easily and you don't even have to take off the hip pouch part in order to get it off and on and there we go we're just like we can swing it around or i like to even there's all this webbing so let me show you how how large even the light can get we can get a whole lot more length out of our waist belt which is great but i like to sling it kind of like a like a crossbody bag too so fashionable right who knew the baby carriers <laughs> would help us feel so fashionable as new parents, but they really do. And like I said, that's one of the things that I really like about Tula's carriers too, is that they come in all these different prints. Oh, you know what? Before we move on, let's get our explore out because we have enough time. We can really quickly talk about breastfeeding and we can go over ring slings. Um, so we'll get in everything. I'm gonna make sure I'm not missing. Okay, good. Not missing any questions. Like I said, though, if I did miss your question, or if um, if you think of something after that, you're like, oh, hey, what about this? We'll be live in the booth a couple more times throughout the expo, and you can always contact us through babytula.com if you have any questions about the fit of your carrier, or which carrier type would be right for you. So we're in. The forward facing, or sorry, the facing in position. This is the free to grow. So the free to grow doesn't have those buttons. It's not going to do facing out. It's only going to do facing in. Just as a quick recap, there's a couple things that I could do here. One, some people are fine with just letting out their shoulder straps. And then I'll take, like we did before, to get baby, to get our newborn in a really good position. I'll take my hand inside the carrier and bring my baby forward in the carrier. So right now his bottom is sitting here and you can see the panel comes up to here on him. I'm going to move his bottom to like here. So I'm going to take my hand in, just kind of move him forward. So you can see how much more of his head we can see now, see now because his bottom isn't here anymore. It's here. We move from here to here. Hopefully that's, hopefully you can see that okay. Because I did that, he's going to sit in the carrier now 
so much lower. You can see before he was up here. Now he's down here. Now I want to get him actually just a little bit lower. Listen, he's up just a little bit more. There we go. And a little bit further in the carrier. And I need to go off to the side a good bit too. Maybe that's too much information about me. Maybe you're a little bit more center. Maybe you're a little bit more off to the side, but simply by moving the waist belt over like this, that works for me. Getting down, maybe down further into the panel, and then we can get latched, move things around a little bit more. The hood is also great for, I have a friend who likes to use it like a cross, like this, kind of in the diagonal way, which gives her just enough that she feels like she's got a little privacy, but she can still see what's going on in here. The other thing that you could do, come back up to the neutral position, because that's the most important thing, really, about other than getting your baby fed, which is a very important thing, and your comfort is also very important. Getting back to that neutral position as soon as the feed is over is also important because that's the best uh, position for your comfort and ergonomics, as well as being able to monitor your baby's airway. The second way that you could do this is to, again, let out your shoulder straps, but also, your waist belt just a little bit because I wear like I said my waist belt up really on my natural waist above my hips so if you let out your waist belt and move it down more on your hips for some people this is just enough extra lowering that really gets it done for them and then I can do the same thing moving him forward in the panel kind of moving him down a bit and off to the side so some people just need to loosen up their shoulder straps. Sorry, the cat wants out. Some people just need to loosen their shoulder straps. What? Some people need to loosen their shoulder straps and their waist belt in order to breastfeed in the carrier. The, um, the big thing with it really, as I take this one off, is so much trial. So much just trying to figure it out. Uh, some people, some people very rarely might nail it on the first one or two tries that they try to combine breastfeeding and baby wearing together. Some it takes a few weeks um, of just trying different positions of baby getting more comfortable with it too. Because remember, babies um, are part of this whole equation as well. It's they're, it's something that they've got to get used to as much as something that that we've got to get used to. Um, okay, so we've got just enough time to go over a ring sling. I don't think we'll get to back carrying today, but if you have questions about back carrying, some of you are probably like, oh, that's that's a little ways off for me if you don't have an older baby at home. Back carrying starts when baby can sit uninsisted. When they start to move over, they're like not just piled with pillows all around and sitting up that way, but if they start to fall over, they can reach out and push themselves back up to a seated position. That is a great time to start, to start back carrying. But ring slings. I want to make sure that we get to that. Like I said, ring slings can be found in Tula's um, signature carriers area of their website because they're a little bit different than the soft structured carriers in terms of um, how they're made um, and how they're released as well. So the soft structured carriers, these are always in stock, though your print may not always be in stock. The print that you're looking for sometimes comes and goes. The ring slings are made in really small batches. So if you go to babytula.com and go to the signature carrier area and find the signature ring sling, you'll find that there's a bunch of different, there's Gerasol woven wraps, there's um, Tula's new Remy print, that's one of the giveaways. Uh, lots of different looks that you could go for with your ring sling. This is one that is a little bit older. So it's no longer around. But if you search the swaps, if you're really like, oh, this rainbow one, it's called Megaloo Happy, I think. Or maybe it's Megaloo Delight. Um, okay. So what I'm doing right now, I should probably tell you, is putting my ring sling on like a belt. Ring slings aren't worn like a belt. They're worn over your shoulder with the rings out in front like this. But when you get it in the package and you maybe you want to wash it, and take it apart, take the threading out and wash it, which is a great idea to do it first. Put some socks over the rings and you can wash it in the washing machine. You can dry it, no problem. Make sure you follow manufacturer's instructions that Tula sends along, because it might change a little bit based on different fa fabric blends. But for this one, a wash and dry, no problem. Some socks over the rings, so they're not knocking around in the, in the dryer. Uh, you wear it up like this, but 
the structure of rings length is just like those old belts from from long ago um, a long piece of fabric with two rings tied on at the end so if you forget how to thread it or you're just like what you can put it down here like a belt and you can place this longer part in through the two rings both rings goes all the way through choop, choop, all the way through then split your rings bring it back through just that one ring there we go so we're very fashionable with our our ring sling belt but you'd really wear it there's this seam right above the rings here you probably can't see it but here are my rings they're sewn in right here the seam goes up on my shoulder and this tail part is hanging down and that's how you know you have it on correctly a couple things i do before i put baby in um, i like to make sure we don't have any twists going on anywhere so i'll just kind of like this fabric up by my shoulder here should run straight down my back and end up in front of me like this so i just kind of do a little check there but you also don't want a ton of fabric out here um, you don't need like this much space for a little baby right you only really need for a newborn as much space as like your elbow takes up so i'll use my elbow as kind of a placeholder and just kind of take some of the bulk out of here not all of it but some of it so i don't have a lot of tightening and adjusting to do once i get baby in and the last thing i'll do you might be able to see move closer how the fabric is really kind of folded over on itself inside the rings here so i'll find the edges and it's really folded over on itself today my goodness i did a great job of making a teaching moment there sometimes i have to take the top edge bring it all the way over but i'll find the edge and just kind of pleat the fabric with my fingers all the way to the other yeah wow it was really folded today <laughs> all the way over to the other side so it kind of makes like a a flower of pleats there if you will and just pull that extra through then you also have your edges really clear out here because that's going to be really helpful when we go to tighten so I, I spent a little bit of time prepping there but once you get used to a ring sling that part goes by and like that it takes a little while a handful or so of times to really get used to it unlike the buckle carriers the buckle carriers are so popular because like i said they're click click go just so quick to put on the ring slings though can add an extra layer of coziness and once you get used to them they can be super fast let's welcome back hamilton i put him up on my shoulder kind of in burping position so that he's high enough so i can reach under here and just kind of welcome his legs in here and actually you know what let's use hazel because she's smaller ring slings start at eight pounds so like i said hazel is a little bit small for all of these carriers but she's a really good demonstration of how small they can really get so like i said burping position reach under here and even with a little baby like hazel we can bring the legs all the way through but like i said earlier at the beginning your little legs are just kind of barely sticking out there with a newborn you just might see their little feet sticking out there and it might not be very much at all maybe they don't want to move their legs away from their body at all though that's totally fine they can keep their legs all up in here let's see if i can get her all up in this like froggy position totally fine let's talk about legs in for a little bit and then we'll pull the legs out and finish up that way and a little arms in there too okay so whether they're legs in or legs out you're going to get to this position where they're on your body where you hold them in your arms just like you would if you didn't have a carrier there. I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit at this point now, right? Take this top edge, put that arm in there, Hazel. Take this top edge, bring it up nice and smooth over baby's back. So it comes up to kind of like the top of their ear here. It's gonna come down though as we tighten, but we're just gonna pull it up that far to begin with. All this extra bunching just stays down here. Don't worry about it right now. Just keep this nice and smooth. On their back now we could if our baby had their legs out i could take some of this fabric and actually i will take a little bit of this fabric up in between us just a bit i'll come back to this move here but i'm going to move on to tightening take that top edge that comes across here that we found and we're going to move it this way not so much down but to the side that'll help keep these rings 
from going too far down. And you can start with them a little bit higher than you'd like them to end up so that we kind of overcompensate for this tightening. Then we, once we tighten this top edge, you can see from under my arm all the way around Hazel, there we go, she's gotten nice and snug. So she can't lean away from me now at this point. The ring sling is holding her in, but I want her bottom to be a bit more supported. So now I'm gonna look, here's about the middle of the width of our fabric. So it's not, it's not over here, it's not here, it's really about here in the tail. So I'm gonna hold on to that while I kind of give her a little bit of a lift support with my hand and just pull out. I'm not really gonna over tighten here, I'm just pulling out all of the slack. So she's nice, so she stays in that position. If she had gotten a little low, like maybe she'd gotten down here, like, oh man, she got low while I was wearing her. I'd lift her back up, tighten up at the top, tighten in the middle, and she'd be back up into that nice position. This bottom edge, as you can see, I haven't even mentioned yet, you really don't need to do a lot with, even when baby's legs are out. And I know that sounds really weird because we might think that the bottom edge of the ring sling is really doing all the work, but it's not. It's the middle of the ring sling that's doing all the work. The middle is holding all the weight. When we over tighten the bottom, in fact, what happens with our legs out babies is that their feet get closer and closer and closer together because there's not enough fabric in here to support the seat area. So we start to lose it. So it's really important that they're in that same sort of position that they're in in the structure carriers, that their bottom is really low, sitting in the fabric, that their knees come up. I mentioned, let's come back to the seat. If their legs are out, a great thing to do before you tighten, or even after you've tightened, but you're just noticing like, these legs are just doing this kind of thing, and we'd like them to be up here. Come in here, in between your baby's foot and your body, and grab that extra bit of bunching. Bring it out to their knee pit, and kind of just a little bit up in between you, just a little bit, not a ton. Same on the other side, bring it out to that knee pit, not all the way past their knee pit though, like this leg kind of was. You wanna make sure that their knees can bend freely in the ring sling and in our soft structured carriers. That's why the soft structured carriers adjust down so small for a newborn, because we don't want them sitting like, like this with their leg like right out to the side. We want them to be able to bend their knee, bend their knee freely. So reaching in between and bringing that bunching in between you can help. Once the, the fabric is positioned really well, if you're still having like a hard time getting baby's bottom in there, you can kind of lift up on the bottom of their feet and that encourages kind of push on the bottom of their feet and that encourages them to bring their knees up and sit in here. When your baby is sitting in a ring sling or really any kind of carrier, think about their position like you think about your position if you're sitting in a hammock with your legs uh, like kind of off to the side. Your legs are hanging down, right? But your knees are up really high, much higher than your bottom. And you can't just jump out of the hammock. It takes engaging your core and pushing those legs down to get out. To get out of the ring sling though, it's a whole lot easier than that. We're just gonna lift up on this ring, give ourselves some slack, come on down with the fabric, and out comes baby. Um, and the ring sling is used the same way for toddlers too. Same thing. Um, as your baby grows, you'll get the you'll get the feel of how you need to adjust it a little bit differently for those bigger babies. But the same mechanics: up on your shoulder, legs through, um, panel comes up. Make your seat tighten the top, tighten the middle. Just make sure that bottom doesn't have any slack, and you're good to go. Thank you for joining me today for Baby Wearing 101. We went over our Explore Carrier type, our Free to Grow, the Light Carrier, and the stand, or, and the Ring Sling. You can find all these carriers at babytula.com. Um, if you enjoyed hanging out with me, you can find me on Instagram, it's in your off um, But it's lovely to hang out with you. Um, enjoy the rest of your Friday and enjoy the rest of the Prego Expo. Bye.